Hello Common Sensors. Today we're going to take a look at a, a speech given by a police chief and a prosecutor about the conviction of a couple of First Amendment auditors in a trial. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe Pometto. Thank you for tuning in, friends, friends of humanity. Uh, I, I took that line from The Witcher, the bard in the show, uh, calls The Witcher a friend of humanity. I consider myself and all of you a friend of humanity. If you like fantasy television, check out The Witcher on Netflix. In the meantime, we're going to get back to talking about our First Amendment auditors. Uh, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Uh, down below, I got a new channel up, Joe the Lawyer. I'm going to talk about the Constitution and my life as a lawyer. It doesn't get any better than that. Please like, subscribe uh, to that show as well. Also, I got my email list down there. Sign up for my email list and you'll get emails about my new content, news that's going on with me, with my law firm, etc. In the meantime, let's do our same time sip. My favorite my favorite, you all know what it is, same time sip, Diet Coke. And it tastes better when we sip it together. Now let's watch this little clip. Lots of good stuff in here for me to unpack from a legal perspective. Unanimous, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so last year we worked with the city attorney's office to file cases on these self-termed First Amendment auditors. And um, they they use the First Amendment to uh, as a guise to insult and verbally attack police officers who are trying to do their work on the street. Uh, most of you, I guess, have seen the videos that they upload onto social media. Um, they are vulgar. They are profane. They are insulting. And uh, last but not least, they are unnecessary. Uh, and again, they do that under the guise of it's their First Amendment right to say these things to police officers. Well, the court proved them wrong yesterday. Um, I was in the trial yesterday over at Municipal Court of Jesus Padilla, uh, known online as Mexican Padilla. Uh, he was charged with three counts of disorderly conduct and found guilty uh, at the end of the trial and charged 500 or fined $500 for each of three counts of disorderly conduct plus court costs. Uh, I think uh, I can say for every police officer out there that we are pleased with that verdict. Uh, I think it, it almost puts a dagger in the heart of, the, of their First Amendment uh, um, uh, excuse for insulting police officers and verbally attacking and assaulting police officers while they're on their uh, on their posts. And uh, with us today is uh, our head prosecutor at the city attorney's office, uh, Jose Nino. And Jose, uh, Jose. Thank you, Chief. Let me get started by saying that the city attorney's office is committed to upholding the First Amendment. However, while uh, when those words or actions tend to incite a breach of the peace, then it's our duty to prosecute to the uh, uh, most to the law. So it's one of those in this case, Mr. Padilla and his cohorts or his partners went ahead and, and used not only abusive but vulgar language towards our officers, but they did it with the intent to get a negative reaction by officers, uh, put them in a negative light, and cause some type, some type of reaction and then upload it onto their YouTube or social media. You know, our duty and our goal is to protect not only the citizens of the city of San Antonio, but our first responders as well. They went, went above and beyond what we would normally consider free speech. The judge agreed with us and went ahead and found those, uh, those individ that individual guilty. Uh, there's two more trials set uh, in April and May against both of the other defendants that are in this case, and we hope to, uh, to get the same uh, verdict. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm sure the chief and myself are here. I have a question. Um, these videos online you've probably seen have tens of thousands of views, a lot of people tune into these types of videos. Is there any fear that what you guys did yesterday are going to embolden them to take it a step further with their rhetoric towards police? No, I don't. I don't believe so. And, and if if people do, then they do it at their own peril. Again, I think the court spoke loudly and clearly yesterday as to what their First Amendment rights are, 
and Orant. Chief, there are many other people who are out there that are police monitoring per se, um, that have different approaches. Do you have any advice for people who feel like that they have a duty to come out and, and cop watch? Um, if they do decide to record, what do you tell people that could show up with a camera that you're not familiar with if they're not, you know, his traditional media? To, to, to use your, your term, you know, cop watch all you want, but it does not give you the right to verbally assault police officers and distract them while they're doing their jobs. Uh, you've probably seen there's a whole community of people who uh, there's a relationship towards police where they feel like you guys maybe aren't always doing the right thing. Their words, not mine. Is there a sense of trying to repair that relationship with that portion of the public and restore that feeling of, hey, we're community police officers, we're here to serve and protect you guys? Is there a sense of that olive branch coming across? We, we are held to the highest standards and to the highest accountability in many, many ways. Um, and, and anyone who wants to monitor us or audit us is more than welcome to do it. But you can't come out and insult and, and call police officers derogatory names in an aggressive way that, that puts police officers in fear of their own safety. And it also, they also do that at their, at their own, uh, the, the, the so what we just watched there was a press conference from what appeared to me to be uh, the chief of police in San Antonio, Texas. And also, I don't know if he is the lead prosecutor in San Antonio, Texas, but one of the higher up lead prosecutors in the city of San Antonio. And they were discussing uh, a recent trial in which two First Amendment auditors were convicted of disorderly conduct and given fines. So first, let's talk about what these First Amendment auditors were convicted of. I, I knew right away when the chief of police said that he was over it, I believe uh, the municipal court, okay, that this was a summary trial. So disorderly conduct can come as a summary offense, which just carries fines or up to 90 days in jail. Or there's a higher grading of misdemeanor uh, disorderly conduct, which can carry probation, jail time, more fines, etc. I could tell, I don't practice in Texas, but I could tell from what this chief of police said, this these auditors were tried in what, it, what in Pennsylvania would be called a summary trial. So it's a magistrate trial. It's not done by a court of common pleas, a higher level judge. It's done by a magistrate. Lower level judge can take care of these. Generally, the people don't go to jail and they end up with fines, but they can go to jail, sometimes get probation. So that's, I think, the first important uh, aspect to consider here to put this into context is these auditors sure they were tried they were convicted but they're not facing significant jail time or significant criminal penalties you heard they they all got the max fine which is a pain in the butt and I'll tell you if they don't pay that fine they could be picked up and taken to jail on a warrant all right, and they, that's definitely, and, and I'm not trying to downplay the seriousness of these lower level offenses, but we're not talking about misdemeanors or felonies here. So he, he witnessed the trial, and uh, it looks like in the city of San Antonio, they probably have a, a lot of these auditors, sovereign citizens, that whole movement is growing. So they're, they're looking at it harder, making a concerted effort to crack down on these individuals. And this trial uh, was a result of an incident, which I don't know anything about. And it looks like uh, the judge found them guilty. And I could also tell by the discussion here that the defense attorneys and or the auditors most likely used a First Amendment argument in order to defend their case and the judge did not agree. Now the interesting aspect here is that this could be appealed, this could go up through the appeals courts uh, within San Antonio, within Texas, so it may not be the end of the story. However, um, it was. I, I thought it was enlightening what the chief of police said, and I agree with this. Is whenever the auditor's conduct goes above and beyond free speech, is when they begin 
to be above and beyond just exercising their free speech is when they begin to expose themselves to criminal penalties to civil liability and this 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 uh, the, the chief seemed to describe this as a breach of the peace and he seemed to say um, that they were verbally insulting I couldn't tell if he was saying insult or assault verbally ass assaulting verbally insulting I really don't know the difference like what's a verbal insult okay a verbal assault uh, so verbally assaulting maybe it was some form of threat that they were lodging at these officers um, and also distracting them from their work and what these auditors did was they exposed themselves to a disorderly conduct penalty uh, important thing to know is that disorderly conduct is a very very vague uh, term um, let me look it up I'll read it for you real quick at least in Pennsylvania disorderly conduct definition and when I say va vague isn't the right word the right word is broad it's very broad so it can be applied to a very very wide range of conduct so let's take a look here uh, in Pennsylvania disorderly conduct offense defined a person is guilty of disorderly conduct if with intent to cause public inconvenience annoyance or alarm or recklessly creating a risk thereof engages in fighting or threatening or in violent or in violent or tumultuous behavior makes unreasonable noise uses obscene language or makes an obscene gesture or creates a hazardous or physically offensive condition by any act which serves no legitimate purpose of the actor so you can see here at least in the Pennsylvania definition I imagine Texas is similar uh, using obscene language making an obscene gesture I know this sounds ridiculous and some and in some contexts uh, obscenity is protected but it's not it's not protected uh, in all conduct all contexts I need to look at this more I think there was a Supreme Court case where the middle finger uh, was given and it was protected under free speech it was protected um, so you can see here engages in fighting threatening or in violent or tumultuous behavior what is tumultuous behavior tumultuous behavior is extremely broad more broad than even making unreasonable noise or obscene language so these auditors I don't know what they did but it's extremely easy to be convicted of disorderly conduct I mean police they it, that's it really just comes down to a judgment call for the judge I've seen this many times where if they think you know what this person was doing was no big deal they won't convict but if they think it was you know a big deal they will convict and they have broad discretion to do that under disorderly conduct so that's what these individuals were convicted of um, you know there were some interesting the prosecutor got, prosecutor got up there and he started by saying that they uh, they they uphold the First Amendment they respect the First Amendment I, I like that prosecutor I liked what he had to say um, as far as the, some of the journalists, the questions that they gave were pretty good. They said, what about people who want to do this cop watching stuff, etc., etc." Um, and the off the, 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 this chief seemed to be open to it as long as it's done safely. Um, as long as it's done correctly doesn't include verbally insulting or uh, distracting type behavior and I I am an advocate of exercising your right to free speech in the First Amendment um, and recording the police um, but in no way should you interfere with um, the, them conducting their job or their work you you do have a right to uh, record them in public places um, but if you're going to do it, do it at a safe distance, do it quietly, and just take your recording and go home. Uh, don't yell things at them. Don't use it as a shield. That's what this officer said. I see that a lot on the videos. And uh, that's uh, it's cowardly. It's used, the, you know, these auditors use the First Amendment as a shield to insult, yell at, interfere with the officers making arrests. Um, that's not the right way to exercise your First Amendment rights. Um, not with people who are trying to keep the peace, first responders, whether they be police officers, firefighters, paramedics, 
uh, anybody in such a situation, uh, a ground crew working out on the streets. Um, you can record them. They're, they're public employees, but don't get in there. Don't interfere. Do not interfere or distract. Um, so, you know, it was interesting, both the police chief and the DA. I wonder if there's a lot of this going on in Texas, maybe in San Antonio, I'm sure in the bigger cities. Uh, we see it in, in a whole a whole lot of these videos on YouTube. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I put one other note here. I can't remember. Well, they said, do you think that this is going to bolden? One of the journalist questions was, do you think this will embolden um, auditors? I, I don't I don't think so. I mean, there may be a, a sort of a, a, a moderate uproar over this. They might make videos regarding this. Um, this isn't a huge prosecution. I mean, these individuals are only going to have to pay fines. They could end up in jail if they don't pay their fines. Um, I think this is a nice pushback in the right direction because, again, if you want to exercise your First Amendment rights, do it in a safe and legal way. Don't do it in a way that interferes. A lot of these people online, they just want to get more views, so they're being inflammatory in their video on purpose, and they're not just serving their purpose of what they state, that they want to mo monitor the police. If they wanted to do that, they wouldn't be interfering with their job. So I thought this was interesting to see some auditors get convicted uh, for specifically auditing activity. I imagine we're going to see more of this, I believe, across the whole country. Law enforcement is taking a closer look at sovereign citizen and auditor movements um, as a whole. So stay tuned for more developments. Thank you for tuning in Common Sense Academy. I'm Joe Pometto, dressed down today, wearing my Penguins gear. Uh, subscribe to my subscribe to this channel, but subscribe to my other channel, Joe the Lawyer. Sign up for my email list. Um, those things, uh, they incentivize me to make more content because I know you're watching. I know you're enjoying everything. Thank you.